What's up guys, it's Dom Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to the House of History again. But this one is a new one, it's a new series. Uh, I guess it's actually like three years old, new for us. Uh, and it is The Complete History of Prussia, an introduction. So, yeah. I'm not sure how early they're going to start, because they're against the complete history of Prussia. Are they going to start like way back in prehistory? Uh, or is it just going to be about the Prussian state itself? Um... But yeah, I'm interested. So anyway, link to the original video down below and let's jump into it. ...of history, I am incredibly excited to tell you what I've been working on for the past couple of months and share it. This has most definitely been my biggest passion project so far and admittedly it has been incredibly fun and very time consuming to research. It is the complete history of Prussia. The idea is that every episode that I will release can be a standalone episode, yet all together they will chronicle the entire history of Prussia from its earliest days until its eventual demise. Because Prussia has always fascinated me. There are so many paradoxes in its history. I don't know if you can call it a demise. I mean, yes and no. I mean, technically Prussia became Germany, right? They conquered the other German states, assimilated the other German states, right? Through uh, uh, both war and peaceful tactics. Um, and then they did lose most of what was Prussia. Uh, is now part of Poland, so um, I guess, yeah, okay, yeah. History. Most European countries claim a history over a thousand years old, but Prussia doesn't. It only existed for just 170 years. In the next couple of weeks, I want to take you on a journey through the complete history of Prussia. From its military kings and the wars they fought, the characteristic Prussian mitres and grenadiermütze, its traditional Prussian thrift, and even the personal relationships between the fathers and sons of the Hohenzollern family, the family that ruled Prussia throughout the centuries. Oh, so was that part of the History of Prussia video? Because that was the first one we watched from him. Um, so I guess we'll skip over that one because I've already reacted to it, but it's uh, the one about Frederick the Great and his father. Now, looking at the prehistory of Prussia okay, so he's going to the 12th and 13th century, the Knights of the Teutonic Order that settled around the Vistula gave a slight hint of what maybe may once be. Yet there was still no proper sign of Prussia at its greatest extent. By the Reformation centuries later, the Margravate of Brandenburg, which would become the heartland of Prussia, was notorious for being a paradise for robber barons. It was the poorest and most backward region of all German electorates, and with much imagination it is doubtful anything of value could have ever been established there. That's Besides the internal structure, as you see on this map, the geographical dispersion between the territories didn't exactly support the notion that one day these two territories would constitute one of Europe's greatest powers. And, well, it took nearly two centuries. In 1701, the Margrave of Brandenburg finally managed to claim the royal title king in Prussia. It was a joke, though, to most courts around Europe. But from then on... Yeah, that's one of my favorite things ever. It's king in Prussia, not king of Prussia, because technically Prussia was part of the Holy Roman Empire. Um, so it's this whole like weird thing. Uh, kind of funny, kind of weird. Development for Prussia rapidly accelerated. Within 50 years, there was a king of Prussia. This man known to us as Frederick the Great challenged three European great powers. And against all odds, he emerged undefeated. It was one of Prussia's greatest moments. Another 50 years later, and a period of decline seemed to fizzle out the short-lived strong Prussian state. But there, in 1850, after the defeat of Napoleon, Prussia now truly settled itself among the great European powers. Between Britain, France, Russia, and Austria, it was the smallest of them all, and it certainly had earned its spurs. It all became too clear when in 1871 what seemed impossible was achieved. The king of Prussia, following a succession the of German wars, Empire. became German emperor. Germany had been unified by Prussia's greatest and most cunning chancellor, Otto von Bismarck. Ironically, the unification of Germany, Prussia's greatest feat, also sparked its demise. As part of the German Empire, it began to wither away. It was slowly being absorbed. Now, there are multiple dates that can be seen as a real demise of Prussia. 1871 with the German unification. 1894 when a Bavarian prince became the prime minister of Prussia. It I, I think it's hard to, like, 
I don't see how you could say 1871, just because, like, they they conquered territory and established the German Empire, right? I don't know, like, for, for me, I think the, the obvious answer would be 1940, or I guess, kind of, I guess you could be 1918 or 1945. Those are the two that I would think would be the strongest. Um, 1918, when the Hohenzollern monarchy was abolished, or 1920, when the Prussian army was absorbed in the Reichswehr. Maybe 1932, when the Prussian government was deposed of, or perhaps furthest in time, 1947, when the Allied powers, in the wake of the Second World War, signed a decree that declared the dissolution of the Prussian state. Prussia has such a rich and exceptional history, its incredible army and radical militarism, but also its superior quality as a state, its incorruptible administration, its independent judiciary, and... It was renowned for its religious toleration and enlightened education. At a certain point in the 18th century, Prussia arguably was Europe's most modern state. It enjoyed a period of great art patronage and architecture. Paradoxically, the successive generations of monarchs often had ideals that were the complete opposite of their predecessors. Hence, an era of blossoming culture was often followed by a period of incredible sobriety and militarism. Now, what still boggles my mind is the fact that Prussia has only existed as an independent state for 170 years exactly, to the day. That is one of the reasons why it is interesting to look back at it, at its kings, its society, its soldiers and wars, its international political plays. So, the next couple of weeks we will look at Prussia as it developed from that small territory with Teutonic Knights near the Vistula and the rubber baron infested Margravet of Brandenburg to the greatness and splendor that Prussia would eventually achieve. We will look at the drama, the intrigues, the tragedy of its international power plays, domestic strife, and even the relationship between Hohenzollern kings as the relationships between the fathers and their heirs, their sons, was overflowing with drama as well. Now, if that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to my channel and check out the playlist on screen to watch the chronological history of Prussia. I'm incredibly excited for the weeks to come, and I hope you are as well. Thank you for watching this video. I would also... Yeah, so, that's... When would you say that Prussia ended? Because for, for me, I mean, you could make the argument it never did, right? Because the state it established, Germany still exists and, and has existed in one way or another since Prussia founded it, right? Um, you had the German Empire and then the Weimar Republic. Um, then you had Nazi Germany... Then it was obviously split up into East and West Germany, but now it's reunified as the German Federation, I think is what its official name is. Just, you know, everyone just calls it Germany. Um, but I think if, if you were going to say it got destroyed, I would have to say it either 1918 or 1945. Because 1918, they lose quite a bit of Prussian territory. The German Empire is defeated. They lose quite a bit of Prussian territory. And the family, like the, the royal family, is taken... Excuse me, the hiccups. And the royal family is taken out of power. So I think that could be one argument. And then the other one would be 45 or 47, whenever the actual treaties were passed and then the decisions were made. I'm not, not entirely sure on that. Um, but basically post-World War II, when they lost even more territory uh, and the country was like literally split in two um, and then became basically puppet states of the Soviet Union and in America. Um so I, th I think those are the two arguments that you could make. But because a German state still exists, it's hard to say that Prussia doesn't still exist because Prussia just became Germany, right? It was a part, it was like a region of the German people that eventually became, you know, Germany itself. So I don't know. I, I guess maybe I'm just getting too semantic with it. But uh, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll be doing part two very soon.